This is Matt for Into Boxing. Delighted to be joined by the Blonde Bomber, Ebony Bridges, here in Leeds. We talked for a while, but this has been your dream, and it's to fight for a world title, and you've got it here in Leeds. What's the vibes? How are you feeling? Such a big week for you. Man, obviously, any time that I'm in Leeds, the vibes are amazing. I just love it here. I wake up and look out, I'm like, man, I love this city, you know. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, it's my dream. I'm, I'm here. Um, you know, I know I've had this world title fight before, but that was like a short notice, you know. It wasn't really, I wasn't prepared for that, you know. I wasn't preparing for that. This is, for me, like the, the, the real, how it should be, you know. It's set up, I've got the whole camp, and, you know, I'm fighting a real champion, you know. Um, in, in Roman Cecilia, she's in um, Cecilia Roman, you know, amazing. Um, and I'm just, I'm so excited, like, yeah, you can feel see. good. Um, yeah, your first, your first fight against Shannon Courtney for the title, you took it on three or four weeks notice and your camp was in sort of split between Philly and everywhere across the world and it was in the middle of Covid which yeah. fucked everything up for everyone. But this time around you've moved base here with uh, Mark Tibbs who seems absolutely like re-energised with having you about and it must, it must feel to you like you're, you're ready now, you're fully ready, no stones, been left unturned. Is that how you feel coming into this that you couldn't have done any more? You know, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm oozing confidence. I'm like, I, I feel like you can feel my confidence because I'm generally confident because this camp has been so good for me. Um, everything about this camp has been amazing. Obviously working with Mark, I'm so settled in here. No popping around the world, um, you know, and everything's come into into place perfectly. I'm starting to peak at the right, you know, perfectly in the right time. I feel so sharp. Um, I've learned so much and I'm truly ready to, to you know, take that belt and, and, and for the people, you know, and, um, and it's great because, you know, I think, like, I'm, you know, you get a little bit nervous, normal to have some nerves, but I feel like this fight, I'm just so excited, and as much as I have nerves, it's, it's a real more excitement nerves, and, yeah. and the pressure that I have, if I wasn't so confident, it would be a bit crippling, the pressure, because it is, a, I'm fighting in front of how many people in Leeds, and, they, and I'm co-main event, so they're going to be screaming, like, it's going to be huge, you know, and, um, and it's a world title, you know, but because I've just had such a good camp, and, and such a good prep, um, and I'm so confident, I just, I, I'm not really putting pressure because I truly believe that belt's going to be mine. Yeah. I believe it. You mentioned um, training with Mark as well, like speaking and understanding the lingo. Yeah. How long did it take? Because obviously you've got quite a thick Australian accent. Yeah. We know what accent he's got. And it's yeah. like, if you've got to be around it, does, did he use any like Cockney rhyming slang yeah. with you? Uh, and you're like, what the fuck? But heaps of, heaps of things that he said, heaps of stuff, like even just what he says about boxing, like he's, he's cues for boxing. I remember being inspired, I'm like, what? Like, you know, like, I, I don't know what he's saying, you know, I, well, I wouldn't understand him, and two, I had no idea what that even meant, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we hadn't done, like, at the beginning, we hadn't sat down and go, okay, so this is what this means, and this is what that means. It's like yeah. speaking another language to me, <laughs> right? Um, but so it did take a couple of weeks, and it was a little bit frustrating between us in the first couple of weeks, because, like, I, I couldn't really understand, you know, and he was like, what, well, he's not used to teaching someone who maybe doesn't understand. Yeah. So it's like, What's, this girl doesn't understand, and I'm like, I don't, you know, but we got through that, and now... You know, you can see us together. You know, we're we're like, you know, we're like two peas in a pod. Like, you know, it's um, it's such a good relationship, and we just just like um, sort of bounce off each other, and um, everything he says I get, and I'm like this. You know what I mean? I've just interviewed him, and he said that you um, you obviously brought him that drawing you've done of him and his dad, and he said that apparently his dad never answers FaceTimes, but he answered it and yeah. saw it, and he said when you clip her, don't let her off the hook or something like that. To you, what a great moment for him, and obviously yes. you. Yes, 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 exactly. Um, you know, Jimmy's been part of the camp as well, obviously, especially at the beginning. But he did have a knee surgery, yeah, and um, so so unfortunately he can't come up to Leeds. Although I did do the bat in my eyelids, and I said, please, Jimmy, I'd really like you there, like you know, like just, just even sit there, like. You know, like I'm no pressure, but I really want you. There, you know, but I gotta remember. You know, he has had surgery and and he's you know getting on, so I couldn't push him too much. But um, he's there, like I said, with FaceTime and yeah, he said that. You know, just giving me the same advice that Mark's giving me. You know, um, and it's all come from a good spot, and and I trust both of them so much. Um, and just having that support. You know, um, I love Jimmy. Jimmy, like I said, like I feel like we're like family now, and I go to hang out at Mark's and I'll go to Jimmy's, like you know, and I showed him like opened up my fight kit and show Jimmy and that and like it's just nice to have that you know yeah it's good for Mark as well because I said to him this is the first female and he's from an era where not that women boxing was frowned upon but yeah. it wasn't really a thought whereas yeah. now I you get in upon, yeah. well yeah. yeah but he's now he's now part of that where he's like you know what it's it's refreshing yeah. you brought a bit of color to the gym yeah um, and you're getting on with all the boys yeah. and stuff like that and it's it's give him that um, it'll be a special moment for him yeah. if you manage to get that belt sadder. yeah definitely and you know when I gave him that drawing and I obviously drew it for me and I you know wrote a message in the back of it and he was like wow no one's ever done something like this for me like nice no one's ever wrote me something nice for me. Oh, my mom has and I'm like well 
welcome to f uh, training females because you know we are a little bit sentimental. Like we were not like that, you know. But there is only one blonde bomber, so I hope he doesn't, you know, think that every girl is going to train is going to be like me because there's only one of me. But um, you know, we've we've done really well, and um, I am really excited. I want to make him proud. Um, that's a very um, a driving force for me to make sure I go out there and perform because, you know, for me, um, of course I want to win the belt and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but I want to make sure that I go out there and I show the world what we've been working on, you know, and make him play, you know, what, and win or lose, as long as I go out there and I do what we've been doing and he's happy with my performance and, you know, there's nothing we can do and she's just the better boxer and the best, better fighter on the night, then that I'll be happy. Yeah, because I think, I look at you and we've seen you fight before, but I almost feel like we've only seen 30% of you because the problem, not the problem, it's great for us, you love a tear up. But you've got some underrated boxing skills, your defence is probably not talked about quite a lot. I mean, in the Courtney fight, although you have that, the headbutt that came through, you're catching a lot of shots on the gloves and I know that you do the Philly shell every now and again. So is that something that I said to Mark, did you have to sort of unlock these tools in you to sort of say, look, if you want to win the titles, you want to get the better fights, you've got to sort of use all your skills, not just maybe what feels right or that you like yeah. doing yeah. if you want to do that and if you found that with him that you started bringing that best out of you and showing all of your skills not yeah. just that that bit of you well definitely you know the thing with like my other opponents as well though obviously the, the bully pressure kind of fighter ebony worked you know what i mean because they they just on running away from you know what i mean on back foot or whatever but at the same time I was also I had this mindset where I'm like I don't want to take a step back, you know what I mean? And even though I could, I'm like I don't want to. Where Marx, what Marx is teaching me is like obviously put the pressure on. Do you? Obviously more refined, but it's okay to take a step back, or walk them onto shots, and use your boxing because you're still actually winning doing that. Because I'm like oh I go back, you know, you know what I mean? But he's teaching me that you can still do all that and still Win you know be winning the fight, you know. Um, but yeah, I know that I have it all there, and he knows that I have all the attributes. Um, so we know that whatever Roman brings, I will have an answer, yeah. you know. Um, and I obviously do believe that my power and my physicality strength is going to be um, a big um, uh, advantage, a big, big advantage for me. Her advantage is her experience. But when you're in there, I mean, experience is great, but when you're in there getting hit by, you know, blonde bomber and getting pushed around and, and bullied and stuff, I mean, how you handle that is going to be a thing, I think. Yeah, and I spoke, I spoke to Enzo Macronel in it, and I've also spoke to Lauren Parker, who's been your one of your main sparring, and she says, look, she can, she can really whack. She, she, she does load up good. Yeah. And and Enzo actually said he believes that you'll be the one to stop Celia. Um, do you see that happening? Do you see her either walking on something or you just being, you just overwhelming her and being too much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. I mean, um, I have full um, confidence in my power, and I know that I can knock people out. And I know, I know what I do, inspiring, and you know, I don't know what I can do in a fight. Um, but you know, obviously, I'm not chasing it. We know not to chase it. You know, but if I break her down enough then that knockout can definitely come. She's Argentinian, we know Argentinians, it'll be like the Mexicans, they're tough, you know, they make, they're made of cement, like they're fucking tough. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and think I'm gonna like crack a skull or whatever and drop her, and, and I'm not gonna go for that because I think for me to get the knockout, I do have to really break it down and soften her up, you know, because she's not gonna yeah. go down easy. But I definitely don't um, see it out of the question, and I definitely think if I can do it, because I have the power, you know what I mean? It's just doing it the right way. Have you sort of manifested this in your head about how it feels, how it sounds, I think, I think you have. Um, you know, obviously Leeds fans going crackers and hearing the words and the new, has that been not keeping you up at night but been in your dreams <laughs> and thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go the on, talk to me yeah. about that. Yeah, seriously, the other night it did keep me up. Like, I was, I was thinking about it, I was getting so, like, because I'm excited, you know what I mean? And I'm, I just kept visualising the fight through my head and because that's what I do, I do visualise. I think it's really important to manifest and visualise but I don't know if I'm getting a bit carried away with it but I'm just like, and then because I was visualising it so much and being so in it real that it was so real to me I couldn't sleep because I was like I had the adrenaline of a fight you know yeah. what I mean and um, and I do I picture it and I and I I live and breathe it you know what I mean I'm, I'm always watching her I'm watching me I'm seeing what I can do I'm you know and um, and I just I don't see it any other way that's I really don't um, and um, yeah I think I've never been as confident even like against like other people that have been lesser fighters I've not been as confident you know a lot of the fans are talking about what they can expect at the way in um, you got a special special surprise for everyone. You normally come, you normally show out. I know Eddie's probably nervous thinking about it. He normally, he normally has to stand looking up, looking right, looking left, trying not to look as best he can. Have you got yeah. something special for everyone? Yeah, I mean, I might be 100 grams over or 200 grams over. I might have to take my kit off, you know. No, but, um, you know, you're just going to have to tune in and see. Or you, One thing you'll know is that it's going to be sexy. And finally, 
how special is it going to be for you if this is like we we talked so long ago about this. Is it going to feel like overwhelming? Do you think if you manage to attain this goal and what you've done for women's boxing in such a short period, people forget you started this in you know mid like mid thirties and you and you and you've done it in less than ten fights and you're getting this chance. Is that going to be like such an amazing feeling if you manage to pull this off? Yeah, I think it's going to be incredible. I, uh, I, I, I don't think too much about the feelings afterwards because I need to obviously I focus if I and if I if I think too much I get a bit too um, over carried away or whatever yeah, yeah. you know what I mean but um, I definitely think that like I said winning this title is what will put the exclamation mark on the story of Ebony Bridges the blonde bomber do you know what yeah. I mean and it needs this the blonde bomber Ebony Bridges her story needs this world title it needs that needs it you know to finish the happy ending and you know whatever not that that's the end yeah. but you know there's a second series after that yeah. do you know what I mean because your book's gonna be unreal I mean you're just on a James English podcast which I mean you know, it, I mean incredible like, I mean when you look back on that did you sort of think oh, should I have said all that because yeah. I know you were quite a private yeah, person yeah. you always say I don't want to go yeah. I don't want to talk about it because yeah, you know I don't need a sub story yeah, I'm built yeah, me yeah. but you mentioned a lot of stuff that were very private and yeah. you know yeah. did, did you feel after that was it a relief was it a bit of weight off your shoulders how did you feel nah, after it? I wouldn't say I was a bit um I felt very vulnerable and I was like oh I don't know if I should have said all that because I don't really want to talk about that you know what I mean because I, I, I like to stay positive and I don't like to talk negative but you know James English has a way of getting things out of you and making you feel like it's not negative but I just want to obviously be focused on it now I don't like focusing on the past but when I do sit down and have a think about it and even my family and friends that you know have been with me through my life um, you know it's it's from where I really came from what I've really been through it's it's incredible like you would it's like two completely different people you know what I mean and um, and it just shows and um, you, can, you can really change your life around, you know. And um, you know, when I finish boxing and I tell my real, the story and, and um, I write a book, I'm, I'll look to inspire a lot of people because I think I'm inspiring a lot of people just in general, just by being this go-getter person that I am. But I know that I'll be able to open up a whole new um, kind of uh, audience and inspire a whole different kind of people with their stories. Yeah, it's definitely got a book or a movie written all over it. It's absolutely crackers, right? Just before we go, because I know you've got to get after done ton of media. If you've got a message to all the fans, the ones who supported you from the start, as you were growing yeah. you got a message for them to probably go you know what just always for my fans you know everyone knows how grateful I am for my fans always have time for my fans and you know I love you guys as much as you love me keep supporting me and I say over and over again I wouldn't be here without the fan support and I cannot wait to get my hand raised and have that belt around my waist for you guys for the guys that have believed in me from the start before the Courtney fight before even coming here and the new ones that keep coming on and all the doubters that change their mind and realise that you know I am the real deal and the people that are still doubting me you're going to see I'm the real deal on Saturday and I can't wait to have a bunch of new fans I'm the new and the new Ebony Bridges thanks for talking to Into Boxing hopefully we can catch up after the fight yes definitely thank you